Is it? If you haven't got the skinny nozzle, you get in that frizz. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Lion cubs. Yeah. You know, and I'm like the big lion. <laughs> the big dog. The big cat. The big lion. <laughs> don't I? I just feel for my own mental health, having a dirty rim is the way. Oh, wait. Coming got... inside the... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Don't use that as a clip. <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Welcome to the Therapy Crouch with me, Abby Clancy. Me, Peter Crouch. And the Wonder of Returns. The Prodigal Son Returns. <laughs> son returns. <laughs> How are we? Have you missed me? Uh, where the hell have you been? Mexico, baby. Sick. God, How was so it? Good. Amazing. Best place I've ever been. Maybe apart from Thailand. Best place wow. ever. Don't you rub it in. Have you been? You went to Cabo? I've been to Mexico yeah. before. Yeah, we've been been a couple of times, haven't we? You been, um, did you go to Mexico with your friends? I, I went to Cancun a long time ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. of course oh, you oh, did. Oh, yeah. I think it's slightly different. I mean, you went all over, didn't you? Yeah, we, did, we went to Mexico City, Oaxaca, San Jose del Pacifico. Which is that is, why you've got hackers on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, Oaxaca? I was backpacking. I then finished in Puerto Escondido, which is oh, listen to the accent. Puerto, Puerto, Escondido. Puerto Escondido. Oh, listen to it. <laughs> <For listeners crunches. laughs> <laughs> it's very impressive that um, bilingual. Yeah, shit you've it got, got me. Out, it got me also a bit of shit with the cartel, like when I was over there. Oh, did it now? <laughs> <laughs> Do you bring those hawker trainers back? Mate, you get yourself to Liverpool. These all the range. But, uh, well, you should see the Montrex <laughs> tracker. You've got to go with them. Am I out of touch here, or are these trainers getting worse for these kids? These give me. These give me like an extra three inches as well. You don't need <laughs> an extra. Three inches, you're already six foot three. Can you imagine me? Yeah, yeah. Imagine me, and that's not, that's not what I need. You know, sometimes it, like, a lot of these trainers now, they've got the big uh, platform. platform on You've them. You've got a bit, like... of a, bit of a little bit of a wedge going on yourself. <laughs> a little bit of a wedge. Just need a bit more height. <laughs> There's nothing better than the tall man, then. Well, I, I hope so, because that's that's what you've got. Good. Bit of length. <laughs> <laughs> what have you guys been up to in my absence? Oh, my God. You know that song, Everywhere You Go, Always Take the Weather With You? We are normally renowned for bringing... Yeah, I don't know if we're renowned. <laughs> we are renowned. We've never had a bad experience until... This... this well, the last few well, times. Well, the end of 2023, but 2024, we are not bringing this vibe. So we went to the Maldives mm. for Christmas. We thought we were all going on the 27th, so we were up at the crack of dawn. Bags packed, and Pete got the day wrong, obviously. <laughs> So. I'm giving up with holidays. <laughs> I just don't. It's just I'm not very good. I, I used that used to be my you, thing. You, Do you remember? I, so, I used to taste a whisker off and take you somewhere special. Yeah, you. Ev you have never failed when it comes to holidays, like destinations, That's my confidence. like <laughs> planning it, it. It's normally perfect, but obviously <laughs> Thailand was an absolute disaster, mm. um, weather wise. But babe, you can't control the weather. You know everything that you planned. If it was sunshine, would have been, would have been great, perfection. It? And last year, we obviously, sorry, 2022, mm. we renewed our vows in the Maldives and we had the most incredible time. So we thought we'd kind of replicate that this year. Well, last year now. And um, it just didn't go to plan. So we've got a bit of, Peter's got a tremendous fear of global warming. <laughs> <laughs> like... Beyond, beyond belief. Now, it's so, not tremendous fear. No, it is. I just it feel is. like there's uh, the, the things are happening. You see it, yeah, David, yeah, you see it. No, David we were in, was right. <laughs> David's right. <laughs> we were in, we were in Portugal with, with when there was a fire. Yeah, and then we were in Greece with, with, the, with the, fires. the fires and so stuff. So we had to and, flee and, both and, times. And then the weather just didn't feel right this year. Well, that would picture the scene, right? We've got a lovely place we're staying in. We're obviously right on the beach, and I'm, uh, I put a towel over my head in the middle of the night, two in the morning, and I was checking sea levels. <laughs> No, it, do you know what? I was, I was thinking, what am I doing? How did you go off a yardstick or something? I was, <laughs> I was just thinking, I was going to, I was monitoring the tide. So we don't... <laughs> I went in, I went in the sea and just... I don't, know, Christmas it, is the perfect time, like, to go to the Maldives, normally. Mm. Like, the weather, you know, it's, it's one of the places you go and you don't even think about the weather because it's normally fantastic. And, you know, we arrived and it was torrential rain. We got the boat over to the hotel. You know, it's the most incredible hotel. Beautiful beach villa. But the pool was actually flooded with the rain. Like, it was up to the, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. max. All the kids are asleep. This is like 10 a.m. 10 p.m. And I'm like, Pete, I'm just not sure about this. I, I, I was actually totally, totally fine. Like, and then when Ab woke me up, I thought, obviously, she's a lot, a lot more dramatic than me. Right? I thought... Go away. Uh, I thought... <laughs> 
you know, I'll be the voice of reason here. And then, obviously, I started thinking about it. And I was thinking, I was looking at the pool and it was overflowing. And I thought, well, then what's the difference between the pool and the sea? <laughs> Yeah. Really, they, there's yeah. rocks that kind of keep it all calm, but but the other side of those rocks is like deep, deep, deep ocean. Yeah, and you're just in the middle of nowhere. There's no high ground. And, and I started I think thinking, oh, four kids asleep here, four babies as well. Like no, Sophia's obviously a champion swimmer, so she would be completely fine. Pete's a fantastic swimmer. <laughs> Me and the other three, <laughs> we'd be, you know. Dust. Fish food. Fish food. <laughs> <laughs> we kind of got into that mindset and then... Uh, it's obviously totally know. wrong. I'm sure there's going to be, you know, scientists and, yeah, you know, environmentalists no, we, who say we, that it's totally safe and, that, yeah. you know, but I just didn't feel it, so... So we left after 24 hours. Fucking hell. And, you know, it's an eventful day doing a 12-hour flight with four children and for some stupid reason I decided to wear, like, cream pants <laughs> and... Got you always a nice do that. glass of red wine. Because you thought it was going to be hot. I know. <laughs> got a glass of red wine. One of the babies run past, knocked it all over me. So then I was like drenched <laughs> and maroon. And then the air hostess got me another glass of red and the same thing happened again. So I was sitting there like just like a berry. <laughs> but we were already like shell-shocked from what, got, what happened, right? So it was like I looked over and do you know when the, you know when the, the, the chair's like swimming with red wine. <laughs> she just sat in it. And like, she didn't even move. Like, yeah. she just looked at me and went, I went, I'm over this. Fuck me. <laughs> 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 it was just like, fuck him. <laughs> what is going on? You know, kids kind of don't even notice the weather. Mm. You know, they had the most amazing time they regardless. Time. But, you know, that kind of panic set in and we just felt... We didn't feel safe. Like, that was all, that was all it was. That was all it but was. But what we did have, we did have an amazing Zumba lesson. It was fab. But th there's a guy, <laughs> that was there's a guy in the hotel called Joker. You know, he kind of runs all the entertainment in the hotel. So, like, last year. He's got some moves. He's got some moves. But, like, last, last year, he'd be like, you know, doing all the football with the kids, all yeah. the games. And our kids just loved him. So that was probably the hardest part, leaving, like seeing them, because everyone was so sad and disappointed. But we did a dance lesson. And obviously, because I would strictly. I, 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 I would I, love to see Pete doing Zumba. We've got the video, <laughs> Sophia filmed lie. us, but it was torrential rain. <laughs> but he said to me, that no, he said, don't worry, it'll only be you two. Yeah. It turned up, there was absolutely loads of people. <laughs> because it was raining, there was kind of nothing to do. So it was, it should have been like on the beach or whatever, but it was in like a boxing ring, which was covered. So there was about 20 guests all in this boxing ring. And I was like, he said, does someone want to, you know, volunteer? Hand straight I was like that. Like that. <laughs> I was like me, that. me. <laughs> and they all knew it was fab. And because I knew I was doing a Zumba class, I put this like little fringy T-shirt on so it'd move. It was fab, wasn't it? Salsa. Um, yeah, it was good. Yeah, I actually enjoyed, really enjoyed it. Myself. You loved it. People said, like, come on, let's practice again. And like, Two left feet. <laughs> no, there was another fella there. I didn't think I was too bad. I no, you were good. I, I need was all right. to see this video. I, thought, I, I need to see too bad. I, got, I thought I got the move. We should upload it on our um, It was a nice shows. little routine. It was good. I had it down. But then there was another uh, fella, Spanish fella. I couldn't speak any English. <laughs> and he, once it started getting Pete's a bit like, more mañana, technical. Mañana. Mañana. <laughs> see, <you tomorrow. laughs> see you tomorrow. He was like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was good though. I enjoyed that. How did that affect your New Year's? Well, we, we got home at like 9 a.m., at 9 p.m. on New Year's Eve, fucked, <clears throat> shell shocked, because the plane coming home was also yeah so turbulent. When we got to the airport from Maldives to leave, the flight couldn't land because the weather was so bad. So mm. it was circling for two hours, and all the 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 crew there were fantastic. They were the crew we had going out, and they were staying in Mali for like two days, and they were all shell shocked. They were like, "This weather was like so scary." So they were like, we've been tracking the flight and luckily the pilot in the UK put extra fuel in so it couldn't land. So then we thought we were going, the flight was going to be cancelled and we were stuck in the airport. But anyway, managed to get on. But it was so turbulent, wasn't it? Like, It was not, it was not ideal. No. And then obviously when we got, we got home, obviously the weather's horrendous. I just loved English rain. <laughs> I went, this is fucking safe rain. <laughs> so I know what this is. Yeah. I mean, I've played in this for my whole life. <laughs> It's like, thank God. You're like, Andy the Afraid at the end of Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. <laughs> like, basket. Oh, like, oh, England rain. Yeah. It's it, just, you know where you are with it. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> but we had like no food in or anything. Like got home, like not even a pint of milk or a loaf of bread or anything. Yeah. <laughs> we went straight to bed. So New Year's Eve, 10 o'clock, yeah. everyone was asleep. And then... Marking. That's the way to Grim. do it. Yeah. <laughs> Grim. So we decided we'll take the kids to London to do something nice because it was obviously Johnny's birthday. Mm -hmm. And again, hell. <laughs> hell. We went to see a show and Jack just just Cried. decided to cry for a slushy. For two hours? So I think it was the entire first part. <laughs> <laughs> but he'd already Dad, had a slush. A slush. Yeah, sure. He'd already he had was, one, but he dropped it. He was going, I want a slush. I want a slush. Can you imagine, right? <laughs> after, after the debacle of the morning, right? I want a slush. I want a slush. I want a slush. I was like, oh, my God. I'm going to put him in a slush machine. <laughs> and we, we were doing dry Jan at this point, stupidly. At this point. <laughs> Second of Jan. <laughs> Jan. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete said he was going to the toilet and just came back with two glasses of red wine <laughs> and I was like you just read my mind oh that's class yeah so then yeah I mean in the end we just like do you know what let's just cut our losses go, and go just, home and went home yeah coming on to the like the weekly wines I've actually got a weekly shine for you because <laughs> oh really <laughs> over the whole Christmas period you have been amazing You've this this therapy's obviously working because he's taking note, he's listening. Mm -hmm. You know, no more shitty presents. I had a lot and you know what that Argos box was? No shitty presents. You know what that Argos box was? Welcome. Well. The most incredible present. Incredible. Um, incredible. This camera that I wanted. Mm. So you never judge a book by its cover. Yeah, Argos is the new yeah. <laughs> well, listen, no, you, need, you know what? You've got, a, you've got a great present there. I, I knew you'd love it. That's why I was comfortable with it. So, Rochelle Humes, my friend, we went to an, an event together. <laughs> I think people know who she Name is. drop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You could have just said Rochelle, my friend. <laughs> yeah, well, she is my friend. Fucking hell. She had this camera, which was amazing, and it's got all these settings on and different blah, blah, blah. And you take the pictures on this digital camera. Yeah. And they just automatically to go phone. onto your phone. Yeah. She could not believe my level of technolo technical ability. Well, I thought it was phone. so low. She thought I was joking. <laughs> like, I was, because I am literally a dinosaur when it comes to phones. I'm like doing all this. And she mm. didn't even, she couldn't understand. I was just mind blown that this camera could take a picture and then it'd be on your phone. I was like, oh my God. Well, I, I, I find it amazing as well. So Pete got me yeah. one and... <clears throat> Didn't charge it. <laughs> <laughs> Still in the bag. But it looks amazing. Yeah, so I've got it here. I've got it here. So the only pictures we took of the Maldives were in the airport in Giraffe. <laughs> when all the kids were still fighting mm. then, actually. It's, I don't know if it's a thing, the age thing. They're just fighting all the time. <laughs> like the boys, like really proper. Are. Killing each other now. Are they? Proper yeah. brawling. I cannot believe it. It's like a new thing. And you can't you can't even separate, separate them, them, can you? No, no, no. They're doing that I'd love phase to know now. if anyone else's kids are doing this. No, all boys, I think, boys definitely fight. They play fight to start. And then they it turns into something. You know when your mum goes, this is going to end in tears. Yeah, yeah. that's where we you are. Know. You know it's going to end in tears. They're playing and it's like they're like lion cubs. Yeah. You know, and I'm um. like the big lion. <laughs> the big dog. The big cat. The big lion. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like the big alpha lion. You know? <laughs> they're, they're all I can't just separate playing. them. <laughs> they're all just playing. I'm like, no. You know, <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, You are like the big lion. Then, uh, <laughs> Kids, it, I do feel like that little sense of we've like got our own little pride in there. Yeah, it's like little a little pack, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like they start with the fight and it's all fun at first, but you just know someone's going to go a little bit too far. You see then Johnny's it, tongue. His tongue comes out <laughs> and then all the kids go, oh, the tongue's out. That's, that's when you know he's gone. So before Christmas, I had all my house painted, mm. which in hindsight, I shouldn't have done that before the floor went down. This is actually my weekly wine. Okay. Carry on. So <laughs> I bought the kids these crazy carts and they're so much fun. It's like a little cart and they go fast, but they're going all ra zooming around the house. It's inside toy? They're unreal. Yeah. Well, yeah. They oh my in, God. Uh, in or out. Yeah. I've had a go on them. You've had a go on them? Oh my God, have I had a go on them? I, I was on them non-stop. <laughs> I'm like, round, Dad, let me have a go. Round, and you go the, 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 the right round the hall, like that big. 
how did you get it? In you sit on it. Do you want Chuck, me is, video? Chuck is my phone, and I'll. Uh, it's out there on Twitter. I think you can look at it on my on my Twitter. There, uh, people have seen it. I think, but it's me on the kids' car. But obviously, I'm slightly heavier than the kids. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not going as fast. When they're on it, it mate, it pings round. Really. Pings yeah. round. And they're it, just like smashing into all the skating boards, broke everything. So I was having a heart attack and a note. As you know, like when you come to my house, I'm like, shoes off at the door. Yeah. You know, I've banned the use of the front door. Yeah. Now. Yeah. This. Yeah, I've been there and I've been kicked out. <laughs> we're, we're, we're coming in the side door. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a... Don't use that as a clip. For <laughs> <laughs> what? Coming in the side door. <laughs> <laughs> is there even a side door? Mm. Don't use I'm, front I'm door. scared to talk now after last last week's pod where everyone said I was a complete nag. <laughs> Can I just clarify? We weren't speaking on that episode. <laughs> so that's why you got an extra bollocking. But you, <laughs> an extra bollocking. <laughs> Usually Not the I normal am. like two or three bollockings. I'm going to, this is going straight into my wine now. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my wine is, um, and you're not allowed to speak now, is um, we are, you wouldn't believe it, but there was one particular quote where... Ab was sitting there. I'm sitting on a chair and there's n there's not one piece of furniture in the whole... Sorry, I'm, I'm going to interrupt and set the scene. So I've got Kendall... You might. <laughs> I've got Kendall quality carpets doing my new wooden floor. You know, we've had our floor for nine years. I want to change. I'm sprucing up the house, blah, blah, blah. Kids are growing up. want to make a few interior changes, especially off the back of that TV show where I feel really inspired and, you know, want our... <laughs> Listen, I've, I, I've, I've allowed it. I've allowed it. But it was your <laughs> quote that got me. No, so what I was thinking, obviously we've got all the sofas and dining tables and all our furniture in the ground floor. The whole of the ground floor is being done. So in my head, I thought I could move things into one room while the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. ...did the, the floor. Room, and then you well, it, it wasn't going to work. So I just called a removal company and they've taken all the furniture away. So I left. I left one chair for people. I'm not joking, but it's not even like a comfy chair. It's like a, it's like a, just a stool. Like, <laughs> and so I'm, I'm literally, so I didn't even actually think much of it. Yeah. But then it was, it was a quote that brought it all crashing down on me. I was sitting there watching the football, right? The skirt, the man was drilling these skirting boards. So I could barely hear it. The kids were running around because they think it's hilarious screaming. And Ab said, um, God, it's, it's so calm at the moment in our house, isn't it? <laughs> like, but being serious. Like, do you remember Jenna? You actually said, I think it was like, um, feel like really calm at the moment, do you? I went, what? <laughs> We've got no furniture. I can't hear the TV. The kids are screaming. The door was wide open. Like, the dogs were barking. I was thinking, what is calm about this? Couldn't believe it. I think... The really? feng shui, did you mean the like... feng shui. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there was no junk or clutter anywhere. It was just an open space. You know, the smell of the real wood coming into the house from this gorgeous <laughs> new floor. What? <laughs> I just thought... I just, I and I just it. thought, I, you know, I can see what, what it's going to be at the end. And I just thought, this is amazing. The girl, Michelle, who does my um, eyelashes, she's fab. And we were talking about, you know, this whole... Great like, lashes, by the way. Great lashes. <laughs> And um, we were talking about, obviously, the new year and I've restarted that Manifest book, you know, by Roxy. And you The know, secret, is it? No, it's called Manifest. Oh, yeah. And I must admit, I've never done anything like that in my life, any Manifest or... I don't know. I feel like I'm just kind of content. Michelle was talking about this book that... <coughs> it's like a marriage book. It was so annoying because I was getting my eyelashes done and I really... She was so... Um, insightful. Insightful, how she described it and... I really wanted to write it down, but I couldn't because my eyes were sellotaped closed. <laughs> <I was like>. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was like couples, they find each other. What what you're lacking, you will try to find in your partner and vice versa. Oh, really? And I think that's so true for us. Yeah, and I think, bit, yeah. you know, all like the hecticness in, in, the, in the house at the moment with the floor and everything. Like, you're so calm about it. And mm. I just wanted to say thank you <laughs> for that. It's all right, babe. Do you know what? It's, you seem to be, it makes you happy. And I think that is key for me. Mm. Making you happy. The donkey didn't arrive, by the way. <laughs> No, I thought we had to build the um, sanctuary for it in the garden yes. first before we got the donkey. <laughs> she didn't have a clue what I was going to get her this year, which was, and I actually, I just knew it was good. And I, I think I did well as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what was your wine? Well, it's, it's basically like, 
what the fuck is going on in our house? <laughs> <laughs> Can I have some furniture back, please? The guys, oh God, they're an amazing team. There, there is something about Northern people, mm. I think. Yeah. Maybe I'm biased. Well, I married one. Exactly. <laughs> They're just fab, the, the guys. They are, they are. They does feel very friendly. And people. they're doing a great job. And I cannot wait for the grand reveal when it's done to show you all because and I've got so many people messaging me going, show me the floor, show me the floor. <laughs> but as you said... You have got a rug as well with a dirty rim, right? <laughs> so she said, you know, you're going to love this. I've got a dirty rim. Oh, uh, pardon? Am I? <laughs> just you. Ten. She said, I've got a dirty rim. No, no words. Oh, you're going to love this. I've got a dirty rim. But basically, so you can walk on it. When I was selecting the rug with James, um, I picked a, a dirty rim. Has James seen your dirty rim? <laughs> <laughs> no, please. <laughs> Before I have as well. No way. Oh, God. James helped me select the colour for the rim. Peter the love rim. this. But I just... <laughs> I just feel for my own mental health... Having a dirty rim is the way. Oh, wait. I can't believe you were looking at rims with James. <laughs> you went rimming with James. Right? <laughs> I told you before about James. Like, it's nice to have a conversation with people who've got the same interests as me. Like wooden Ribbon, floors. For example. <laughs> rims. Right, weekly wines. All right, audience wines. I'll get straight to the point. My weekly wine relates to those waiters and waitresses who love to fat shame you and throw snotty looks when you order more food than you possibly need in one sitting. I have eyes bigger than my I've belly. Heard of that. And enjoy. Yeah, oh yeah, I have. That we used to go to the rudest Chinese. Yeah. Unreal. <laughs> we. we <laughs> I just remember my dad used to order and the man used to go, "No, it's the crouch. No, absolutely, it's too much." <laughs> my dad go. No, I want a little taste that you said, no, it's, yeah, this is ridiculous. It's a good thing about Chinese, you always take it home. Put it in a doggy bag? I always take it yeah. home. Yeah, it was so yeah. funny like, how rude he was though. Yeah. It was like, absolutely no way. Anyway, uh, my eyes are bigger than my belly and I enjoy taking the rest of my Chinese home for a midnight snack later in the evening. Midnight snack? Uh, a midnight snack, wow. Uh, we started doing that. Yeah, we do Haven't that. We? Not midnight, we, though. No, about nine. Oh. We eat so early, we eat at like half four. Yeah, with Our the kids. dinner with the kids. And then we'll get into bed and we'll start watching our box set and then we're like, Hungry. Pete goes, I'm a little bit piquiche. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm a bit piquiche. I don't say that, do I? You do? <laughs> what do you mean? You don't know you say that? I do know. Like, yeah. He goes, I'm a bit piquiche. And I'm like, so am I. And then we go down together and make a little... Snack Last really. night... Last night's one, or not, oh, was night before, that was a nice, that was a good spread. Yeah, it, it was, it was, <laughs> pizza bread, taramasalata, we had che pie. cheese and crackers with a bit of pork pie and mustard. Nice. That was good. A little picky tea. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Anyway, can we get to this dilemma? Yeah. Uh, I don't need some spotty teenager asking me if I think that's a bit excessive. And then throwing me a snotty, sni a snotty side eye when I make it clear I'm ordering what I want. Mm. Yeah, I feel that. Especially Chinese food, as like you said, you want to take it out. And like, also, like, you might want a rib, you might want a, I don't know, a shoe or something like that. But oh. you're not going to eat them all in one sitting, are you? I don't think, I think if you ask for advice, I think they're there to help. You know, yeah. you go like, do you think that's too much? Or well, they go, I, I do If actually. I was an owner of a restaurant, I would be saying to my staff, do not be giving yeah, snotty yeah. looks when they order more than they should. Yeah. Because obviously, it's bad for business if they could, oh, don't get that, don't get that. You're taking in less... Mm. Of course, Money. you need yeah, a bit. Are you sure that's enough, sir? You don't, yeah. you don't want to try the peeking, peeking duck. <laughs> that's, that's you need I always some think guidance. about restaurants, like, you know, when you get there and sometimes you're sitting for like half an hour before they ask you for a drink. I'm like, if I had a restaurant, I'd have my staff, as soon as they sit down, ask them for a drink. By the time they've took your first order, I would have had three glasses of wine by then. Yeah. You would have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, can we order now? We're in a rush. Oh, oh, yeah. Unreal. It's, it, obviously, we've talked about this in the past, but. I just love it. And we've never not been in a rush. Because <laughs> you just want to eat straight away. Yeah, You're so yeah. impatient. No, it's not that. I'm always <laughs> hungry. Great. And then once I'm you've experience. eaten, you just sit there for like an hour and a half. Yeah. Gab and finish the wine. Down at 18 coffees. <laughs> oh, I loved it. We had the food in three seconds. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My weekly wine is aimed squarely at my normally lovable girlfriend. Whenever we go away, I have to share a 25 kg bag. Thinks uh, it's totally acceptable to take up to around 23 of the 25 kilos. <laughs> Surely it should be half half and half. The icing on the cake is when she moans at me for wearing the same outfit on holiday multiple times. <laughs> That's a fist. I am the chief packer in our house. 
Yeah, but do you, you do you do sneak some stuff. In. There's always my t- toiletries. I put my, my yeah. toiletries. Heavy hair thing. dryers, straighteners, the lot. Yeah, I get hair dryers, straighteners, and all. Do you get straighteners because I don't use straighteners because my hair. I'd be bald if I used straighteners. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah just <laughs> melt my hair bald. off. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got the hair for straighteners. I just go tss, and it'd be in there. Oh, but you know, I, you get the okay. picture. Yeah, yeah. All right, all Beauty right. products, so did, and they're so, heavy. There's a lot of heavy products heavy as well. in there. Yeah. Surely, I always think surely it's hair dryers where we're going. It's not like yeah, it's, the, it's all about the nozzle. <laughs> Is it? If you haven't got the skinny nozzle, you get in that frizz, <laughs> hun. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So your own hair dryer is key. Okay. I think. I think. But I, I'm, I pack your is bag it? so well. Yeah, you know you do. What I do is I get out stuff and put it near the bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I have the ab f- packs. And then Ab puts it back in the wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 He's, he's got this like green shirt that he keeps keep putting in. <laughs> Are you no- have you noticed that that I just keep Which not putting that freaking short sleeve grey green one. That's thing? That's a beach vibe. No, but it's it's like why do you not like that? It's about twenty years old. Like it's it's only like a shirt from H and M, but it's, it's, a it's like shirt. a pajama top. It's a nice shirt. I take it out. Beach. He puts it in the pile she every, it out. every time. God. God, he had that's his, sneaky. He had his that. new, t- he had his new uh, two tall swimming trunks in there. The silky yeah, numbers. Yeah. Silky cargo maroon swimming trunks. They went, I went rogue on them. I'm not sure about Sexy them now. <laughs> sure about them now. Cargo maroon. <laughs> I'm not sure about I think I went rogue there. I don't think I'll ever wear them, will I? <laughs> <laughs> but not Gucci I'm not interested I, don't think I, love it. No, I, I like the two shirts tall and hangers trunks are good in yeah. the bag so when I get away I unpack the kids bags and their bags so there's no like carnage and you've got all your stuff where you can see it which I, I think is... except we don't unpack on holidays now yeah we leave it in the bag and then leave two days later I really I really <laughs> yeah. really really want to go away for Feb half term but Pete's not just for me. saying no not for me I'm scarred go skiing scarred Dennis mentally did you get bad weather you want better than you go skiing? You don't. <laughs> I've been skiing where it's been snowing and it's hell. Yeah, it is. Too. You don't know why it's hell, but you want sun on the slopes. Sun on the slopes. You do, yeah. I did the eagle over there. <laughs> you want? You actually want one. sun on the slopes? It's been one. You want sun one. <laughs> for one was day? Literally one. For it one was day. literally one day. Yeah, I we went to Finland. Oh, fucking one day. You know what you want? Sun, sun on, on the, the slopes. slopes. <laughs> you want skiing in like sleet? It's not worse than sleet when all over you. You've only been once. Yeah, because she's, Ellie sent me a picture been of the chill sleep. factory. <laughs> you want you want to get like a tan while you're skiing? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Blue skies. All right. Imagine sitting there in the freezing cold, sleety, <sighs> wet snow. No thanks. I think. Well, th- I think to help this guy, this guy here is to. Uh, I think can, he can you not just take up? another? Can you not just take another bag? <laughs> And also, what you need to, to, to you know, women are pain and are always going to be a pain in the ass. They're always going to take too much of the bag. Quote to the path. <laughs> women are always going to be a pain in the ass. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. They're always going to do it. And I'm like... so offended from last week getting called like high maintenance. Do you know, I'm, it's really hit a nerve. It's mm. like fucking hell. I'm a real person. Ooh. Who was Who's high un- maintenance? Just an who occasionally was, brush. Who was unhappy with their husband that one particular week? And unfortunately, we had to do a podcast and I couldn't hide <laughs> the hatred that day. So everything he said would be an issue to me. Mm. But that's normal. That is so you normal. You just need to grow up. I know. <laughs> well, I'm just saying. Suck it up, Sally. You you're not, you're not the up. friggin' most easiest person on earth yourself <laughs> listen hey, your, your, your true colours come across and, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately Look. people can resonate with the amount of grief you give me oh shut up that's what you got why can men never seem to wipe their ass properly honestly when it comes to my husband's undies I've seen less skid marks at Silverstone Look. I do all the other cleaning around here but it's a hoop <laughs> when it's I, a hoop when I draw <laughs> What's a hoop and why do men laugh at anything related to bums? It's think just you've so your own weird. question there. I just don't, I just don't think. Yeah. I don't think that's come in from a, from a woman, I'll be honest with you. No, I've men... never known a woman say the word hoop. See why men say it because it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Such a funny word. Only hoop. Do you know what? Right, let's get into the podcast now, babe. You know, we've covered a lot there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's your birthday. Yeah, so my wonderful romantic husband took me for a fabulous lunch. Then 
the ultimate spa day, facial massage, spa facilities, and then a night in a hotel where we had lots of champagne and cheese and ham toasties. <laughs> it was amazing. Mm -hmm. Just what the doctor ordered. Yeah, kids back to school, mum and sister had the kids. And, you know, that's why we're here today. We're still in the hotel recording the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say, we're, we are, I think we say where we are, we're in the Corinthia mm -hmm. Hotel, which is a beautiful hotel. Best spa in, in, in London. And the spa is off the scale. Yeah. It was so funny because when wow. I was, because he gave me the card in the morning in our house with the kids, he brought me a Victoria sponge cake in oh. bed. They're like, you can't get out of bed this morning. So I'm like lying like that because you're obviously... Can't really get out of bed. <laughs> And uh, they brought me my Victoria sponge. It's your favourite. It's my favourite with a card. And in there, it was like a night at the Corinthia Hotel with a massage and a facelift facial. A facelift facial? <laughs> 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 no, a non-surgical facelift? Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, she looks so much younger now. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, I would have if we didn't drink too much champagne last night. You're about 25 now. <laughs> Do babe. It's that facial, 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 facial. Because you know what they, they said to me. This is the top, this is the one. Like this is the top one. Mm. So I was like, I didn't know it said the word facelift. Really. I, don't, I was like, what's he lift. trying to say? Yeah. And then um, I was panicking because I was thinking it was take. I think it was like an hour and a half facial and an hour and a half massage. And I was top panicking day, yeah. the whole time, thinking Pete's gonna be um, like waiting for me. <laughs> Pete's getting zoned. Face <laughs> facial and massage. Pete's back in the face gym. <laughs> Pete's up at the exact same thing. I was like, fucking hell. I, I walked in here actually and Ellie, when Ellie was here, I went downstairs, came back up, Ellie was here and she said, oh, your skin looks nice, Pete. <laughs> yeah? yeah. Oh, that'll be no the way. facelift facial. <laughs> That's so funny. But I do, I do feel, you know, it's scary getting older. Yeah. I'm actually quite happy that I'm a year younger than I thought I was. What? I thought I was 39, but I'm actually 38. <laughs> how long... Sorry, backtrack. When did you, How long did you think you were 39? Backtrack, because I was going to book... I thought you were 38 for ages. I was going to... For a year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because oh, yeah. I, I went to book a mammogram. Oh. You're supposed to get it when you're 40. Yeah. And the girl said, um, you're too young because you're only 37. I was like, what? <laughs> this, this, this recently, yeah. Like, before this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she didn't know. So I was like, Pete, I'm actually... I'm only 37. I'm wow. not 38, so I'm, actually, I'm 38 now. Feels like, because I'm, I'm four, in my 40s now, feels like you've... Stopped you've been in, Yeah, you've stopped aging. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought you'd, oh, you know, I'll, like do, I'll, I'll do that for Abs. Okay. <laughs> I'll do that for Abs 40th. But it's just not coming. In, in not, three years. <laughs> it's just not happening. I know, yeah, when it's you're trying to fob me off with presents for me 40th, I'm like, no, I need them now because it's ages away. <laughs> I know. I think I went through a phase of adding years on. So I look good for my age. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Instead of, instead oh, really? of looking that old. Sense. That's actually makes uh, sense. Are you now in the process of it, No, because I'd say I was like, I, yeah. I think I've told people I'm 40, so I look good for my age because people said I, I look old for 36, or uh, 37, or 38. So it's already whatever. complicated, isn't so, it? So hang on, where are we now? You're 38 now. We're officially 38. Okay. That must feel nice having a year back of your life. I'm just, I'm just thinking just about it like, How old do you really look? He's looking at you like... I know, you're making a You look gorgeous. You look great. You don't look 38. Well, you said to me yesterday you could be anywhere between 35 and 38. Who said that? You. Say that. In the meal. In our lunch. <laughs> you said 35, 38. <laughs> <laughs> I can... well, that wasn't very good, was it? I should have gone a bit lower than that. I know, yeah. Well, I said 25 there. That's what I meant. <laughs> You could be in your 20s, I, I think. You could. You could. I couldn't. But the thing is, it takes its toll on a woman. Life. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no. why I got you the facelift face. Yeah. Sure. You know, having four kids and the worry. Mm. That's my new, like, philosophy for the year. And that's the thing I've taken from that manifest thing because I think, you know, I don't believe in a lot of that stuff. But the core message of be kind to yourself, kind words, you know, if you're if you're looking in the mirror going, God, I look great today. You're going to have a better mindset to attack the day and, you know, you know, follow your dreams or mm. be more productive. Be kind to yourself. Be kind to yourself. <laughs> no, because I said to Pete, like, that's what we have to do. We have to say, like, positive reinforcement mantra. Do you like, think it helps. Think, it I, does I, help. I, I think... And you know what it's done? You know, like, I, I hear from Stephen Bartlett, 
you know, go in the gym. It's not even a choice. It's not a decision that you should make. It's it's happening. It's like so I've been to the gym twice this week. She came into me. I was in the shower. She came in and went, Pete, I'm going to the gym because it's not a choice. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck off then. Well, Pete's not washing his ass in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pete's like that under the water, leaving his bum out. <laughs> 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 yeah. Kim, Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. We were watching it. And then Pete went, Oh, get this off. I can't bear that. Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Come, Kardashian. <laughs> I was like, What are you talking about? Kardashian. Did, was it me who said that? It was. Oh, so, that's so good. Obviously, it's Wednesday. I went horse riding on the Friday. Oh, yeah. Mm. Getting back into it. What week you've had? I've had the <laughs> best week. I feel great. Um, the floor's getting laid. Mm-hmm. I went. Um, <laughs> I went right. Lucky floor. <laughs> Floor's having a better time than us. <laughs> At least someone's getting it. We need some females in our team. <laughs> I can't laugh at these childish what, rim floor, hoop yeah. and laid jokes. The floor's getting laid. You can't. You guys are good. You game. can't set us up like that. I expect us to be bad about. Do you know what I mean? It would not cross my mind. <laughs> it would not cross my mind to take something sexual out of that. <laughs> Well, that's why. That's, like, that's, that's, the problem. that's it. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, so I went horse riding on the Friday, which made me so happy. But because I haven't ridden for six months, I couldn't walk for three days afterwards. So I was supposed to. It was hard. But yeah. Oh, fuck it, no, there's so many. <laughs> Carry on. I know. I'm just thinking all of, all of it now. Continue, please. Do you want to go another minute? <laughs> no. <to yourself>? no. <laughs> you literally just said, in, in that sentence there, you just said. Road hard. There, there was so many innuendos <laughs> yeah. that I didn't mention there. You kept the lid on it. So I'm sorry. I will stop it now. Well, I was just trying to talk positive, and you've <laughs> ruined it. No, you, you've uh, had a good week, and it's been a good week, and I'm, uh, I'm glad you had a good week. And I feel, I feel it. very special. Good. Well, all my lovely friends. You know, I was texting Alfie, my friend, about all this like manifesty stuff, and I was like, "Do you believe in this?" And he was like, "Yeah." And I said, "Do you think I'm negative?" a negative person and he said absolutely not he said all the only words you use in your vocabulary are positive words incredible, like, incredible <laughs> gorgeous amazing that's true and mm. i think she says those words a lot and i think it's funny how people perceive you and, and what people take from your personality do you know what i mean mm. yeah it's, it's just it was a, I, f- I felt like i felt loved this week should i say how was your lunch where did you go we went to Zuma, which used to be our old stomping ground <laughs> when we were young. You know, we hold the record for the most margaritas drunk in there. How many? 67. What? You too? No. no. Was, there was, there was a <laughs> we had a group. It was a birthday. It's for your birthday, John. Nice. We had, were you not there? We had 64, 67 margaritas that night. Mm. Collectively. Between the three of us. <laughs> <laughs> we had a nice lunch, didn't we? Lovely lunch. I think what happened then, obviously, because I, I knew what the crack would be. I kind of read the script, but I, read, I thought I read it really well. Lunch, straight into like the spa day, but mm. then I knew that you wouldn't want to go out after that for dinner. Because so when you've had a facial, you, you don't want to be putting makeup chill, and all that yeah. on, and you've got oil in your hair, and then it's like, oh, I've got to wash my hair again. So there's a cheese and ham toasty in here. <laughs> and if you look, there was a lot of champagne consumed. And... Uh, the, don't tell them about that because then they'll bill us. <laughs> <laughs> and then the idiots who were in here before <laughs> spilled ketchup on the carpet. I and I was actually, I couldn't write minds complain. I've yeah. actually never spilled anything on my own carpet and then I spilled ketchup on there last night and I was, couldn't believe it. I was trying to scrub it off last night. But yeah, thank you. And it's your birthday coming up. Have you it, got, it have is. You got any... Do you know who else's birthday is? The podcast. The podcast. Almost to the day. Oh it's a year God. to the day mm. that we've started releasing these. How have you enjoyed it? Well, I've loved having some special time on the sofa with you. Mm. You know, <laughs> each week, mm. talking and reminiscing. And, you know, it does make you stop and be grateful and think, you know, we've done some incredible mm. things in our lives and had we've got great stories and had great experiences and mm. obviously ups and downs and a few arguments along the way but no it's great I, I didn't I didn't expect it to be as successful as it is I don't know why people would want to listen to it. Mm. Mm. <laughs> do you have any standout memories or moments from the podcast <laughs> in the last 12 months you know when obviously Dr. Braceway came on mm. and he said he'd help 
um, women and, you know, hearing some of the success stories that have come out of that, you know, of women mm. he's actually helped and they've become pregnant. I love getting to hear personal stories from our listeners and, you know, people who are going through a hard time or chemo or they've split up with the partners and, you know, they said, we've put a smile on the face. Yeah. That is the most rewarding thing for me. You know, and just get, going back, you know, hearing from people, you know, who got back in touch. We, have we heard from Jack? No, no. Race Day Jack? So, no, we haven't heard back from Race Day Jack. That's been one of my favourites. I think listening, like, obviously it's nice for us to talk as well, but I think listening to other people's kind of dilemmas and problems, some of them hilarious. Yeah. Some of them, like, obviously actual problems. Um, and, and I think when you hear the feedback of, like, people just enjoying themselves listening to this, mm. I think that is... That's obviously very special. Yeah, well, it's it's nice to think that we, you know, someone is if they are like a lot of the time they've been going through a tough time or something like that, and then they can just escape listening to to what we're doing here. And even if you do that two, three, four times, it makes it worthwhile, don't it? Yeah, and I think what's also funny is the sense of how normal we feel. Yeah, you know, doing this pod, you know, with the 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 questions that people write in, the agony abs, the weekly whines. Everyone's We're got the same, the same problems. Everyone's got the same problems. Yeah. We're all mad. <laughs> yeah. And and it's so funny that the differences between obviously men and women. And like when I'll say something, I don't have loads Stop of women. Being sexist. No, I just mean loads of women will be like, <laughs> you're in the wrong Pete, you know, this yeah. and that. And then all there's loads of fellas who go like, Yeah, God, mine does that. <laughs> <laughs> I got the male army on me last week. Call me a nag moaning at you going on your golf. <laughs> you were on one last week, God. I know, but... God, get so over it, what? grow up. <laughs> How about you, Ross? You're the most fancied invisible man in the UK. I know. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Have you? Didn't, I, I, heard, I heard a rumour. I heard a rumour. Ross signed his first autograph the other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's not on worse. Yeah. It Do you makes know what me die. What happened? What happened? It makes me Talk die. <laughs> you git. <laughs> <laughs> no, someone to be fair, one of my mates came over to me and he was like, uh, oh, one of my friend, my, my girlfriend's friend is a big fan of the pod. And he's like, uh, do you think she could get your autograph to send it to her? I don't, I don't, I don't, wow. I, don't, well, I can't remember what it was. Something about coming in areas. <laughs> 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 oh my god! You can't. Let's see. You can't write it? things like that these days, surely. <laughs> the dizzying heights of stardom <laughs> come crashing down. Yeah, already. It is mad because I get so many girls saying, "Is Ross single? He he sounds so fit and all that." And I'm like, "It's funny what a voice can do to you, isn't it?" Well, it's like I should start doing audiobooks. Yeah, you should. You should. You should. It's going do you well. know what? It makes such a difference because I've been listening to a couple of audiobooks lately and. It's all about the voice. We've said this before on the pod, actually, about voices. Remember we saw that, like, fit man in, in boots? <laughs> oh, yeah, that? yeah, yeah. And then he spoke. I don't remember like, that. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I guess I'm with Ab so much that I end up going like, oh, yeah. He's, yeah, he's tasty. God damn, he, is, <laughs> yeah. he is nice. <laughs> and then he went, excuse me. <laughs> Yeah, he has a little voice like this. Where are the bees, please? And we were like... Oh, fuck it out. He went, he's had a man. Imagine, <laughs> imagine looking like that and having his voice. It was a horrible voice. Sounds like a little... He had a little Tommy squeaker. No, it wasn't like a squeaky... It was a squeaky thing. No, it was, it was like... Um, oh. Imagine looking like him and then having a squeaker like that. <laughs> It's that just reminds me of when people say, like, I don't like that wet look on my men. <laughs> just wear that too the much. They like, should say things like, what do you think of him? And I'll go, yeah. You get it. Yeah, I think, I think yeah, he's if, nice. if Pete even comments yeah. on it, like... I wouldn't dare. On a woman. I wouldn't dare. It's even like, it's an absolute supermodel on telly. He's got too much work. <laughs> <laughs> but she's a nightmare. I quite enjoyed having the guests on. Yeah, I mean, that's something, something, something different, isn't it? And I, I don't necessarily have... think that we have to... So have couple couples all the time as well. Don't you? you can have the odd mm. person. Might be interesting hearing like a single person's perspective, mm. knowing how much of a good time they're having, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how much they're enjoying life. <laughs> <laughs> I've told you, I'll say it once, and I'll say it again. You know where the fucking side door is. <laughs> 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 I don't know where the side <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pack your bags and get out the utility door. <laughs> get out the utility. Do you know it's actually really hurt with all this? Joking. 
<laughs> no, I'm only joking. I'm you happy. You would die without... Do you know what? I'd die without you. I was um, <laughs> I was literally 15 minutes behind him. I was out to my massage and facial. And I had three texts. Where am I and how much he misses me? Ah, <laughs> Peter. Birthday, it's your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Where are you? Are you? <laughs> Listen, I enjoy spending time with you. I don't deny that. The poems made a comeback. You remember... Did you enjoy the poem? I, I feel like it. you're... I loved it, but there's only one word that stuck out Get for it. <laughs> brush. Is that home? No. Stop What's saying the that the third time. <laughs> you said brush today. <laughs> no, I am. Um, you are brush, though. So I can't change who I am. I know, I know. And I come from a good place. <laughs> okay. Go on, then. What, what was the word? So when we first got together, Pete used to, like, write me poems all the time. We've like, discussed this, and, I know, and, you, and you, wanted to come, you wanted to come back for the poem. I brought it back. I feel like Pete's listened to you a lot on the therapy no, yes, you, You've done so much good work Presents, on yourself. Presents, poems, notes. It's no, it's true. not about presents, Ross. Take that back. Pete's done a lot of work on himself for the for the better. Well, listen, you know what? This is this is therapy. I go away and I do my I do my homework. Mm. So I you know, think I, I, I as well. How calm was I in the airport? You, the, air, the, the only thing you've done is air, airport abs. You calm that right down. Yeah. You haven't taken much else on board. <laughs> <laughs> what was I supposed to take on board? Well, there's, there's lots of weekly wines that I've, I've gone through. I don't think you've, you've, you've done this, many this others. But this is the time to say it. It's, you know, it's our year anniversary. I want you to be it's calmer. It's a brand new year. I think I'm so much calmer, Pete. You're not really. Right? So much. <laughs> no, I think you're calmer in airports. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. <laughs> uh. All right, babe, just, just maybe just a little bit more. I think you can do slightly better. With the calmness. Just a bit of admin there for you now. <laughs> a bit of admin. <laughs> Just crossing the I's and dotting the T's. <laughs> bit of admin. I think I'm so much calmer. You're not. I am. So I'm going to the gym. No. Going horse riding. Mm -hmm. No, it's just, you know, just a little bit calmer would know, be better. I think it's just, I think you can work on it slightly more. Is that it? No for next week. Yeah. Is that my only note? <laughs> yeah. It's all right, it's to be fair. Yeah. No. Be no, I like spending time with you. And I like doing a podcast. I, I have a joke and laugh at a joke, but I love spending time with you. It's good. It's fun. fun. Bubbly. Bubbly. That's what you wrote in the, in the poem. Is that the way that's the code? Right, the one negative word, right? There was loads, there was loads of descriptive words, and the one word was bubbly. Your bubbly personality. The what you, that's what I'm saying. You saying all your friends say, but you're only negative to me. I don't. You only I don't picked want, out I don't the one want my negative. husband to describe me as bubbly, like. <laughs> That's that's like you, you, my best gay mate to call me bubbly, not you. <laughs> You're supposed to say like hot. Did say that hot, sexy, calm, calm, <laughs> calm, <Thoughtful>, kind. <laughs> right, happy birthday, Therapy Crouch and Abigail. Happy birthday, and thanks thank for being you. with us with us to the listeners as well. We. So Ross, how have you found? Amazing. Your new job. So class. We have a laugh every day, don't we? We're coming into work. Mm -hmm. Get to work with you guys. Our John, George, everyone. It's just, just a right laugh. Compared, I think years ago when I was doing like spreadsheets and that in an office compared to this, so much better. Yeah. Mm. Well, that's good. I and mean, you're doing a fantastic job, to say. Well done. You and Thank John you. as well. And yeah. George and it, you know, the whole team. Mm. Um, We're very lucky. And, you know, we wouldn't be anything without our listeners either. So exactly. Cheers to them. And to another year of listening to us talking absolute shite. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I've recently caught my co-workers bitching about one of my best girlfriends in the office. I'm not sure how to approach it. The, the girls, who are hardly anything to write home about themselves, were commenting on the other girls' dress sense, hygiene, and supposed dog shit breath. <laughs> As I said, these girls are far from oil paintings themselves, and I actually think they're a bit jealous of my friend. My predicament... I suppose is, do I tell my friend what the people in the office have been saying behind her back, which A, could oh. destroy her self-confidence both in and out of the workplace, and B, ostracize me from the rest of my colleagues, snitches get stitches, or do I just keep my head down and mouth shut? I'm uh. not going to, she stated her name, but I'm not going to say it just in case a uh, 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 dog shit breath mate finds <laughs> out. <laughs> I am totally and utterly beyond belief against bullying and nastiness. You know, if, like watching that salt burn the other day. That any good? 
haven't seen it uh, yet. It's bad. Is it? I mean, this film it is good though. It's incredible, but it's completely disturbing and traumatizing. But it, you know, the acting's fantastic. Sounds great. Thought of children getting bullied, or people just in general getting bullied and feeling rubbish about yourself. It makes me. It makes me want. Yeah, to it's not nice. Inside. Like talking it behind makes me people's so back. So angry. Like dress sense as well. If I if I was there, I would just Excuse go. Me, I've been abusing my Solomon's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not behind your back, John. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I draw the line there. <laughs> I hate bullying mm. <clears throat> with a passion. The thought of anyone feeling sad or self conscious or insecure. I honestly think men don't have that kind of. You know, I think you can put a group of men together and they're all like, you're all right, mate, do you want a pint or just yeah. could just chat? They might not be a cup of tea, but I think men in general yeah, but don't I think, do I think, that I, like, thing, like, do it's the club. It's like, if, like, if someone had a pair of rascal trainers on, like, you know... Don't point like, at me when like, you said like, that. Like, <laughs> you like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, rascal trainers. <laughs> like, just, they are first thing, first special, thing, them, When he walked in, we went, they're rascal trainers. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And it's, the ice is broken. He knows they're rascal. <laughs> Someone told you to put your hand in the fire, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Whereas I think if you start going, oh, look at her trainers, you know what I yeah. mean? That's all, that, all that's cloak and dagger. But then it? when you're all like friendly to the face, then you're all that's really nice snide, to them. Well, it's that's no good. I thought she was going to say, look, don't take the piss out of my mate. I think that's, I think that's out of order. It's so horrible when people are bitching behind your back and being nasty. It's so mean, girl. She doesn't have to tell the girl, though, does no, she? I, I, I wouldn't I don't tell the girl. I just go in and go, don't you think that's a bit That's not nice. Do you think about how she feels? Yeah. I wouldn't tell the girl because there's no point in unnecessary hurt. And then I should, she should just go to the other girls and just say, listen, you pair of bitches, pack it in. <laughs> bitches get stitches. Yeah. yeah. Never mind, stitches. Stitches, yeah. Get, bitches get stitches. <laughs> All right, let's go. Another one. Hi, Airbnb, Pete. Loving the podcast. Thanks for keeping me sane over the Christmas holidays when I was having to deal with a house full of in-laws for five days. I'm not sure if this counts as an agony per se, but I'm definitely in need of some parental advice here. Oh Basically, me and my husband are due to take our young family to Disneyland, Florida this year, but I'm a bit worried we haven't thought this one through. I recently went on a last-minute girls' trip to Spain and had the abysmal experience of being sat in front of a whinging toddler <clears throat> who cried and kicked my seat for the majority of the two-hour flight. Even though I'd like to think my kids are better behaved than that little shit, I'm also a realist <laughs> and I've had multiple family days out ruined due to the murder they've caused between me and my husband. Oh. We've been away with the kids in the past, but only ever short haul. And now I'm panicking that I'm, we're going to be on the receiving end of a passive aggressive tuts and looks uh, that I was so happy to dish out to that poor woman the other day. Not only am I worried about kids. people's reactions, <laughs> but how am I going to cope with this myself? I'm not the best of flyers at the best of time. Never mind when my kids decide to go full Chucky mode at 30,000 feet. Chucky mode. Is it too harsh on my husband <gasps> if I look to upgrade behind his back and leave him to deal with an inevitable carnage for eight hours and not a mum? And not a mum. Oh, I love that. Good, oh, good God. message. That's that. a good message. You know, this is something every parent has to deal with. There are a lot of people scared of long haul flights. We've done quite a few of them with our kids, and I must admit, I have spent one whole they flight. They are good now. Um, standing up because when Jack was a baby, he would not let me. You know, under two, they have to go on your knee, mm. and the, we held up the whole plane take off because Jack wouldn't let me sit on the chair with him. <laughs> and they were like, "Please sit down, put your belts on," and I'm like, he "I literally can't. I, he won't let me on the chair." So I spent a whole uh, eight-hour trip standing up next to him while he was just lying oh, down. Oh, no. And, like, that was awful. And we have had a few mishaps with our kids, but they're so good. Other than that, you got to admit, like, even though we had the nightmare with the Maldives trip, we did 10 hours there, 10 hours back. There wasn't, hours? wasn't a peep out of them. Not a peep. They were so good. And he was a gorgeous little baby sitting next to us, wasn't he? Mm. On the other side. Yeah. And he was just the most cutest little thing and he was just, she had him sitting on the floor and then she put him in this little crib. Wasn't he good as gold, that baby? Good as gold, you know. And I and wanted to hold it. I was like, I want to hold the baby. But it, it's it's hard. And, you know, we've been on flights. Remember that when that woman screamed at her baby? Because it oh, did yeah, you remember not saying that. stop crying. She was and like, shut up. She was like, shut up. You know, and it's just at the end of your time. Yeah. Like and I get that. And it's so hard for a mum or a dad. It is hard. But so I, hard. That whole upgrade thing, because Peter said, if we go on a flight, I don't know why you don't want to sit next to us. I just said, I'm going, it's not even the kids, it's you. And I'm, <laughs> I'm totally honest, it's a fucking nightmare. So I just said, look, 
you travel uh, maybe the day before, or I'll go the day before. No, because we have to stay together. I just, I just feel like we should, we should break it up. It's got to that kind of stage now. I'll take the older, better behaved kids. <laughs> I, I don't mind. I'll take the young ones. I don't, I don't mind. Whichever way round. Yeah, but I like to sit by you. That is not reciprocated. <laughs> unfortunately. Do so someone on my flight to Mexico so whose baby mean. was kicking off? Well, if two incidents actually. One of them was that they booked the emergency exit seats, and you're not meant to have kids in those seats, are you? No. And they were young that they had to sit on the laps, and but they were kicking off when they had to move because they'd obviously paid for the extra leg room, and I got put in their seats, which is great. Oh. And then another family, their daughter or whatever, was kicking off, and he sat in the toilet with his daughter screaming for like forty minutes for like most of the flight, and I thought, well done you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Flushing her head down. <laughs> any advice for the woman? Have you learned any tricks over the years? Don't let them stand <clears> up, <throat> I think. It was the, it was the main oh one. Oh my God, yeah, we did that from early on. We did that from newborn. Nip <laughs> that in the bud. Like, but... You're not allowed to stand up ever I'm unless it's to the toilet. And when you see people walking the kids up and down up the and aisle down. on oh, the hands yeah. and it's like, no, say hi never... to him. I no never... one wants to say hi to your kids. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't. Got your own. Just like, go away. So true that. It's yeah. so true, isn't say it? Say hi to this. Fuck off. <laughs> Not interested. <laughs> that I think that is a top, top tip. Nip it in. Like, it's like no kids can stand up. You're not allowed to stand up. You only... That one where you're walking up and down. I hate that. I you can't see the kid, it. You see the, like, the dads that are walking up and down like, constantly? No. From the only allowed to get up to go to the toilet. Okay. We sit in the thing. You bring get. We bring double. We bring games, iPads. They love all the films and stuff as yeah. well. There's loads to colour do and, planes. Colour and book and pens, all of that. Do you think we'll ever do that? We go in business class and leave the kids in. When it's slightly older. Home Alone style. I think oh it's <laughs> the Home Alone ones, man, isn't it? They got 12 kids and they're just both sitting in business like that. Yeah. And they've left one at home. <laughs> Social services. I know. Did you the 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 <laughs> yeah. I thought that. <laughs> Absolutely large in business. Do you know what? There's loads of flaws in that film when you watch it. Because I was like, she should have asked the neighbour to knock round. All their friends. No, but all the phones are out, aren't they? Because of the storm before, they can't contact the street. I want to know what, kid, what, the, what the dad does. Yeah, he's minted, isn't he? Or the, the mum, whatever. Christmas time's the most expensive time to travel. We're going to Paris. Their house Isn't was an Airbnb balling. last year. You know, the house of home alone. You could go and stay in it on Airbnb a oh. couple of years ago. That'd be so funny. I feel like you shouldn't feel any under any pressure. Most people with a heart yeah. understand that, you know, if, if you're doing a long haul flight, kids, kids are going to kick off. But, you know, I always think it's fine on the way there because you're like so excited for your holiday. So you're kind of more tolerant. It's on the way back where you've had your holiday and you're coming home to the rain and the mm. kicking off. You're like, ah. It's always <laughs> longer on the way back, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, but that's, that's the only tip really we got uh, and good luck. Hey, Pete and Abby, I was listening to one of your episodes recently where Pete mentioned he doesn't like confrontation and I'm really hoping you can help me. I'm worried that my husband is too nice for his own good and that people in his office are taking advantage of him. After years of chasing this promotion, he finally landed the role of head honcho in his office. But I worry he is less of a wolf of Wall Street and more of a puss in boots when it comes to putting his foot down with his employees. Every night he seems to come home with another gripe about one of his subordinates and how they are taking the piss either by coming in late, taking too much time off. Ross. Missing deadlines, etc. And then I have to spend the whole of my evening listening to this drivel only for him to go into work the next day and act like all is forgiven. I'm definitely more direct out of the pair. And I've told him multiple times that he needs to put some of the people straight, but he is worried about upsetting the office dynamic, which is essentially code for he hasn't got the balls to front one of the more dominant personalities. I feel like we have similar dynamics. I feel like we have a similar dynamic to you guys, and I was wondering how Abby got Pete to be more assertive. This, this is a, this is a myth. This people think because if you're nice, like everyone said to me when I was playing football, oh, you're too nice. You know, yeah, you won't listen. I've done all right. You know what I mean? People say, oh, nice guys finish last. Bollocks! You can still be nice and and be assertive and, and tell. You're people, also not that nice. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you trying to kid? Oh no, yeah, it's all an act. <laughs> I am nice. You are nice. And and like you you don't and people say can't be nice and all that people say all time all time football yeah and I was a, I did have to become a different person on the football field, but then also like you know I still you can still be assertive and, and nice to people you don't have to treat people like shit to yeah, get by this whole thing of like ah oh, you need to you know be ruthless to succeed in business and I'm doing fine and you don't have to be like that. 
you can be nice to people. You because can because you have people to be ruthless for you. That's no, why. that's not true. You can I can I can still hold my own if something's wrong. I can say that's wrong, but you don't have to say it in a horrible in, way. In a horrible way, you can mm. still you can still be assertive. I don't think she's saying that. No, but what I'm saying I is like he, she's... I think he's. I think she's saying that. Um, he's, he's a bit get, of a wallflower, maybe. Yeah, he's, he's, he's letting yeah. people get away with it. He's, he's in the office. You know, he's letting people he's take boss. advantage of him, which is a different thing to no, me. No, but that could, but that can happen because if you're a nice, if you're a nice person, you give but people you leeway. An, a lot of people take take. That's have, happened to me in the past. But you have been in that situation so many times yeah. where people think because you're nice, you're going to put up with shit. They you don't. They, that, but, I, but you don't, that's what I mean. Yeah. So you, you get to the stage where you go, right, you give them kind of leeway and you think, you know, that. but then they take the piss and you're like, hold on a minute. I'm a firm believer in always being nice to people because I feel like the people you meet on the way up, you're going to meet on the way down. Mm. And I, I think it's just nice to be nice, but I am definitely, I'm, I'm actually not that good at sticking up for myself. You, you don't take any shit. I don't take any shit, but I'm not good at sticking up for myself. I, I would die for Pete or any anyone here, you know, I'm like I can be a complete Rottweiler, but um, I find it difficult to stand up for myself, mm. don't I? I'm always like, Pete, can you t mm. tell these people this or Pete, can you do that, don't I? Yeah. But if someone says something to Pete, I'm like, you're what? a good, you're a good person to have in your corner. <laughs> Do you think you should start with like smaller things? So not going because you obviously it's hard to confront someone on a big scale, like in the office. Like maybe start with like I don't know waiters and waitresses or something like that. You know, my food's cold. I'm not really happy about that. Can I get it sent back? If it is cold, obviously not staying the purse. Because it's hard to just go in and go, all right, I'm fucking Don Juan today and bollock everyone if you're not like that. He's saying it, like, coming in late, taking too much time off, missing deadlines. Yeah, you should just say, look, guys. Like, oh, you just missed that deadline. I think it's, he needs to say that. that that's what I mean. In, in a boss role, he has to be more assertive. Yeah. I think for him as well, he will feel more confident in that role if he sets sets the boundaries because sometimes if people are taking the piss and you kind of build it up in your head and it becomes a big, you know, you've done it so many times. I say to Pete, just, just tell them. It you put it off and you put it off and put it off and then when you, you actually do it, you go, God, I feel like I've had a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Mm. I deliberate yeah. sometimes, whereas I've just then done it. Whereas I'll think about it for ages. No, and... I'll, I'll tell him to send a text instead of going, I can't do Monday. Well, it'll have to be another day. I'll tell him to write that and he'll go, but let me see what you've actually wrote. And it'll be mm. like, hi, um, I can't really do Monday, but maybe I can. Let yeah. me see if I can change something. I'm Skate like, you around didn't the write what I've just told you yeah. to write. That's I not used the... to do that. I used to do that. You're good now. I can't be asked anymore. <laughs> just tell them straight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a geezer. <laughs> good advice. <laughs> <laughs> be more geezer, Jane's husband. Have you enjoyed today? I've enjoyed it. Yeah, have you had a great birthday? I've had the best, best birthday, and that's genuine. Like, it's yeah. been so special, and I'll hopefully do something nice for your birthday. <laughs> Don't worry about it, baby. Listen, you know, I'm happy. I've got very low expectations. <laughs> <laughs> Just spend this whole pod saying how unhappy you are. No, I'm not unhappy. I'm mad. There's always room for improvement in, all, in every relationship, but there's, you know, I'm very, very happy Therapy Crouch and you. And you, Ross. Cheers to that. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers to that.